Well, let's, let's go to the Lord once again. Our Heavenly Father, we do give thanks for this opportunity to be here together with um, the believers who have uh, purposed and made an effort to, to come and join together and to knit our hearts together in, in prayer for these various topics. <clears throat> we um, have similar uh, burdens and, and want to be sensitive to the leading of the Holy Spirit and uh, would like to see, um, well, just your will accomplished in our, in our own lives, in the lives of our uh, local uh, cities, in the, in, the, in the wider range of our, of our state or province, and even as we've expanded our prayer to uh, the continent of North America. So, Father, we, we pray uh, for help now as we would um, uh, just consider a few thoughts from your word and that we would uh, purpose again to spend time uh, in prayer together. So we, um, we pray for help, we pray for good understanding, we pray that the Holy Spirit may be unhindered in our, in our session here this afternoon, and we pray this in Jesus Christ's name, amen. Please uh, take your Bibles and turn to 1 Peter, 1 Peter, and we'll look at uh, chapter 5. quite kind of you Midwesterners to let two North Carolinians um, uh, have, have part in the afternoon. And, um, and then our brother Grady, um, I think you're from the South, aren't you? <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, First Peter chapter 5, I, I'd like to draw our attention to uh, verse 9 and um, there in 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 9, it starts out uh, kind of completing a thought from verse 8, which we'll look at in a moment, but uh, it says, whom resists steadfast in the, in the faith? And then this, this phrase right here is what I'd, what I'd like us to right now, knowing that the afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. Knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. We're here um, to pray together. We have um, we've been sharing some of our some of our own thoughts, our own burdens, our own uh, prayer requests, if you will. And um, have you have you ever noticed that um, oftentimes when you're going through a particular trial or struggle or just real something complex in your life that um, uh, as you may have opportunity to share that, or maybe you're not sharing it, but you may start talking to somebody else, another believer, and then you hear the thing they're going through. And I, I know sometimes I'll walk away from the conversation like, boy, I'm glad I'm not them. You know, that's tough. They're going through a turf, tough circumstance. Um, and other times we go through something and, and um, we had a uh, situation where our um, our second child was a full-term st stillbirth, hard situation. And um, a as, we went, as we experienced that, there are people that I didn't know had that same experience, but they came out of the woodwork, so to speak, you know? And, um, and so as we, as we hit up against tough things in life, um, this verse shows us that the same afflictions are being accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. Um, no doubt during break times or um, during our having to visit, there's some things that you and I are having some of the same trials, some of the same afflictions. Uh, you're going to meet somebody else that has a common thing that you're going through. Um, this whole passage, as we, we kind of, we've zoned in on that, the, the, the fact that we're going through similar things. We're, uh, we're all cut from the same bolt in the sense that um, you and I are created in God's image and that we are, we are, we are made, designed for heaven. We're, we're made and designed for a relationship with a holy God, but we are strangers and pilgrims in, in this land, in this area, um, in this life. 
as we, as we, we back up and we, we look about um, the fact that we are here to pray, um, go back to verse 5. Uh, verse 5 begins like this, Likewise, ye younger, submit yourselves unto the elder. Uh, yea, all of you be subject one to another. And now notice this next section. Be clothed with humility, for God resisteth the proud, but giveth grace to the humble. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time. Uh, remember, I, I drew our attention to the fact that we're talking about the afflictions that are being accomplished in the brethren that are in the world. When it, when it says brethren, right, we're referring to this, the other believers are going through hardships, are going through trials, are going through difficulties in their own life. And so... He says to humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God that he may exalt you, that he may bear you up, that he may lift you up, that he may help you. And then our, our prayer, verse 7, casting all your care upon him. Do you think in this next session it might be appropriate to do some casting, Right? To, to unload, um, to, to not bear these things of ourselves, but to, to know and to, to turn them over to the Lord. We are under the mighty hand of God. We considered God's greatness earlier, right? The mighty hand of God. How great, how mighty is God's hand? Casting, casting all your care upon Him. And we're so graciously reminded that he cares for us. How does the Lord Jesus care? Well, he demonstrated his love. He demonstrated his love on the cross. He, he, do you ever think about the fact that um, God, the Godhead, is all-powerful? Uh, we heard it prayed earlier that, um, that, that he is omnipotent, um, that he's all-knowing, that, that he is um, that, that he's all-powerful, um, that, that he's present everywhere. All those attributes that we know and enjoy, can you think about taking all those attributes and then focusing them on love? It's like love, um, love uh, on steroids, right? I mean, it's like love amped up to the nth degree. God's love. How does he love? He, he cares for us. He loves us. And even when we're going through those afflictions, he loves us. Um, we have the reminder in this passage as well that um, of our adversary, be, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. And then here's where we picked up before, whom resists steadfast in the faith. Uh, we're not ignorant of Satan's devices. In fact, one of the reasons that we're suffering some of the same things, that you and I have some of the common trials, is because we have the same adversary. And we're not ignorant of his devices, and he's going to use lies, he's going to use slander, he's going to use um, the lust of the flesh, he's going to use the lust of the eyes. It's, uh, you and I are subject to the same thing because we're dealing with the same adversary. But we resist, we resist steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in our brethren that are in the world. And then look at verse 10 as, as we, uh, verse 10 and 11, uh, draw some conclusion to some of these things that are being written here. But the God of all grace, who hath called us unto his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after you have suffered a while. Mm. And you know, some of our, our similarities in trial is the fact that we are suffering and the while is a variable, right? Is it a day? Is it a month? Is it a year? But after you have suffered a while, uh, the Lord Jesus Christ is, is there. Um, he is with us in this trial. He is, he is there for us. Uh, he has been an example to us to follow. After you have suffered a while, 
Um, God's working will, will make you perfect, will establish you, will strengthen you, and will settle you. you got to like that word settle, right? Because we're often unsettled in the time of trial or difficulty. We're often very unsettled. So we, we, we start to put all these things uh, together that are connected as, as, as are given to us here. We're to cast them off, you know. We're to be humble about this. We're to look to God to lift us up. Uh, we're to look for, to God to work on our behalf. We're to resist Satan, resist the adversary. I think we're to uh, encourage one another as we notice the commonality in the, in the afflictions that we're, that we're experiencing. But we're to allow God's grace, the God of all grace, who has called us. He's called us, right? He's got us in a refining process. He's got us um, in a, uh, on a track, on a path, in accordance with his own will. He has called us unto his eternal glory by Christ Jesus. And then we'll just pick up verse 11. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Is that a prayer? You know, is that a prayer? They just said amen, right? Um, and so perhaps this afternoon as we go to prayer, um, we may... Um, recognize God's work in our own heart, in our own life, that we would come before him humbly, being, uh, guarding ourselves that we, not, um, that, we not, um, that we not take a place that we shouldn't take, that, we, that we, we truly humble ourselves before Almighty God, and that we might let go, that we might cast, we cast these things off, resist the devil, pray for our brethren that are in the same circumstances that we are in recognize the God and his eternal glory recognizing our shepherd our savior recognizing that even though we suffer a while there will come a time that we we'll experience God's perfectness God's God's strength and the fact that God will settle us and we pray we pray to this end to him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen.